Hello, I'm Naresh Khanna from Packaging South Asia, and I'm at Drupa in Hall 9 at the Uflex stand with Anandshri Chaturvedi, who is the CEO and Managing Director of Flex Films International, which is a part of the Flex Group, a big major part of the global Flex Group. And uh, I would like Anandshri to begin our uh, little walkthrough by telling us a little bit about the Uflex CI Press, which frankly I didn't expect to see right. at Drupa, right. and it's a bit of a surprise <laughs> to me why you're showing it. Yeah. And uh, I would like you to explain that oh. what really you are thinking about. Oh, thank because you, Because this Nareshi. machine has been around for a few years yes, now. Yes, absolutely. But it seems to be a second coming out. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, Nareshi, the reason why we have this machine here um, really is because, you know, the first time we brought it out, it was really a missed opportunity in the okay. market, right? Um, because, you know, this machine really represents, you know, the pinnacle of our engineering powers today, right? Okay. What we can produce, the best technologies that we, could, we can put together from the engineering know-how we have at the best cost. So today, okay. yeah. the market exists in three segments, you know? One is, you know, the machines that come out that are, you know, have fantastic engineering and fantastic capabilities, but are very, very high cost, you know? Correct. Then you have, you know, very, very low cost machines um, with optimum engineering um, that come out of, you know, let's say the, you know, the South, South Asia, Southeast Asia markets. Correct. This machine fills in that middle segment, you know? Okay. Where you want make in India, made in India, optimized, you know, quality, optimized production, minimum downtime, minimum changeover time, but at a reasonable cost, and local service, global supply chain, you know? So even for this machine, we have a global service setup. Okay, great. So you think the absence, what, but what, is, what explains the absence from the market in the last two, three years of this machine? Well, you know, design. Design. You know, we had to go back, redesign this machine, okay. redesign some of the metrics, you know, you see all the servos in this machine are new. Um, you know, all the uh, yeah. you know, rollers, you yeah. know, everything that you see in this machine had to be ground up. We changed the stuff that didn't work, we have okay. stuff today that we're very confident will work okay. well and we'll work well for the long run, you know? Okay. Also, if you look at the Indian engineering diaspora, it has evolved greatly in the last couple of years. Yeah. So, you know, we had to, I would say, you know, up our game, okay. you know? Okay, yeah. so that means it, it was a bit of back to the drawing board Absolutely. to come up with the optimum uh, product absolutely. with the kind of upmarket uh, trajectory that you were aiming for. Absolutely. Of a highly automated press. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about this uh, sure, uh, flexor sure. sleeve? So, I mean, the key thing that you have to know about this product really is, this is a way to make um, a flexo machine into the same quality as a, as a roto press, you know? Um, so if you look at the quality that this machine produces, you know, this machine will be able to produce the same print quality. Ooh, oh, this is a heavy roll. I thought I'm a strong person, but maybe you can, you know, see it from the other side later. Yeah. But uh, but these sleeves have, you know, they will last about five times longer than a regular flexo sleeve. I see. You know, um, again, they have, you know, they're much more robust, much yeah. more durable. Um, yeah. And, you know, if you look at even the shadowing and some of the th features yeah. that this sleeve can produce, yeah. um, it, it's it, in excellent print quality, yeah. excellent uh, print stability, a much more uh, substrate compatibility, um, and it's it's just an amazing new technology that we were able to bring to the market. Let me just add that I know the man who built this whole project, and he promised to build a project that was the best in Asia. <laughs> yes. Okay. He's built a literal Taj Mahal. Yeah. Not far away from the Taj Mahal. Yeah. You look <laughs> you can here. Go right from the plant to the Taj Mahal this in is one a, hour. Yeah. This is a good example of the contours yeah. that you can see uh, yeah. in this uh, in this. Uh, in yeah. the eyes, yeah. uh, and that's a fantastic thing. Okay. So it speaks for itself. Yeah. Okay. Um, but this is a very you know new age, latest technology that we are able to bring, and we're very proud to be representatives of this technology okay. um, for all of Asia. Okay, yeah. great, great for this short no, no. Uh, walk through. Thank you, Narishji. Let's continue Absolutely. with a little bit of a, a, a question and answer Absolutely. about how you see, first of all, how do you see demand globally? Because that is very interesting from your uh, 
insights of global packaging demand. Absolutely. What is happening in the East? What is happening in the West? Yes. Why is it happening? Yeah. Uh, what's happening with the supply chain interruptions and disruptions? Absolutely. And how do you see the, the packaging market going forward? See, the key thing that I'm seeing now, Nariji, is you know, in the West, the West seems to be in a little bit of a trap. Okay. Because prices increased dramatically during COVID yeah. and post-COVID, you know? Okay. Now, in this scenario, what's happened is store shelves yeah. have, become, yeah. at, have become a very premium place in okay. the West. Okay. And prices have gone up to a point where inflation now is leading to consumer goods that are sitting in supermarkets in the West hmm. competing with fast food chains. Okay. Which is a scenario that has never existed before. Okay. So now if you look at a pack of, you know, a, 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 you know, a set of potato chips or mm. cookies, yeah. they are now competing with, you know, a, 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 a Happy Meal, okay. which was something that never used to happen in the West before. That means their uh, habits have changed? That the habits have changed and the buying they, scenario is changing, right? They don't want to cook at home anymore? They, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a bigger debate than before. Right. Okay. So when you go to a grocery store and you say, oh, you know, I'm paying now $10.99 yeah. for something that I was paying, you know, $4.99, $3.99 for, a, you know, a couple of months before. And I can get a similar meal, even with, you know, cost inflation that's kicking um, to fast foods and, you know, fine dining or even, uh, you know, you know, outdoor dining. That's a scenario that's changed the perception of what the consumer puts value towards. What about the East? That same thing has not affected the East because A, there's not that much retail real estate in the East. You know? What do you we mean by East? Do you mean Eastern Europe? Do you mean, I mean the South? South emerging economies? South emerging economies, you know? I mean, okay. Eastern Europe would be a part of it, but you know, there are supermarkets of all levels in Eastern Europe. Yes. But if I talk about South Asia, Southeast okay. Asia, okay. and just, you know, um, retail store shelves in general, right? I mean, the growing retail market. The growing retail market. But you don't know? you think there is a shortage of retail space in emerging economies? I wouldn't say it's a shortage. I would say there's an emerging concept of retail okay. store shelves in India or, or in Asia in general, right? But there is a bit of a mom and pop scenario, bigger mom and pop scenario. There's a bit of a bigger corner store scenario. And the premiums, just the heavy premium, that's attached to a media, you know, a, a eye level store shelf in the West is not the same in the okay. East, right? Okay. And that's actually saved the East from this scenario that we're dealing with today, okay. where they're not trapped in this heavy price, you know, stagflation so, scenario that the West is facing. So there is supply flow and There's, work flow exactly, and, you know? and uh, money flow, etc. Yeah. So yeah. the products are moving more steady, okay. you know, uh, especially okay. from a CPG point of view okay. and a packaging point of view. How do you see the growth of the packaging industry then, given this? So, the growth of the packaging is seen as a very interesting place. The large CPGs are, you know, that command this premium store shelf space are, I would say, today, what we see are struggling a little bit, you know, because they are in the space where their core raw material prices have gone up, you know, yeah. the price of cocoa has gone up. If you see, you know, recently I'm seeing the price of uh, orange juice concentrate has gone up. So all these base prices are going up, yeah, you know. Coffee prices, have, coffee gone prices up. have gone up significantly, yes. you know, things like this. So they have to offset this pricing. They have to offset the price of, you know, shipping going up, offset uh, these other prices going up and this other cost, ancillary cost going up, you know. Yeah. They have to offset this with packaging. Yeah. So what that is doing is bringing a big shift to generics. Okay. And that's what we are seeing. So okay. packaging is now shifting towards, you know, supplying to large CPGs, but also there's a big shift towards supplying towards generics. To own brands, supermarket to own brands. own brands, supermarket brands and stuff. I because see. they're, you know, they're not paying for this large retail shelf cost. Okay. You know, and, and they're saying, okay, you know what, we'll be in the bottom or the top. And that's... It doesn't to, matter. It doesn't matter to us, but the okay. customer is going to seek us out and, and, and put us there. Okay, one you last know? question then. This is also related to the fact that it seems that some of the big brands, their investors are telling them, stop all this talk about sustainability. Right. Step back. Yeah. Delay your commitments to 25, make it 2026. 20, yeah. Instead of 50% recycle, make it 33% recycle. So how, what is the sustainability issue? My view is that Uflex has to lead. Yes. You have to lead India 
And you have to lead globally 100%. on the issue of sustainability. Absolutely. And I think this is an opportunity Absolutely. when the rest of the countries are a little bit shy because maybe the stakes for them are in the hands of financiers. Absolutely. Uh, we, as more conscientious industrialists, yeah, yeah. should be able to take this, take up the challenge. What Absolutely. do you say? I 100% agree with you. So if you look at, you know, if you look around our booth as well, if you look at this, how do you lead? You lead by investment. So you look at Uflex has invested. Yeah. Companies are investing. Yeah. But Nerji, I'll be very honest with you. This delaying of goals, this delaying of this, this will only lead one place. And you don't have to look very far. You saw what happened in Diesel Gate. Hmm. We are headed towards Plastic Gate. Okay. What will happen is, you know, these all these commitments, all these things will come to true fruition hmm. one day. Hmm. And what's going to happen is when that 2035 date comes, when that 2040 date comes, which it will come eventually, when 24 right now, 2030 is around the corner. Yeah, the next benchmark you know, this, is 2025, yeah, 2030. 30, you know, these dates will come around, right? These, this, these things cannot be delayed. Eventually, what's going to happen is somebody, you know, maybe, you know, a company that's associated yeah. with, you know, one of these, you know, other, one of these ancillary firms, they will run a spectrum analysis. And that those results will be published on social media at the time. And then that will lead to a huge scramble towards sustainable <laughs> things, you know? Okay, That's what's going to happen. That's okay. the sad fact, you know. Okay. Uflex is ready. I believe, you know, other firms are ready. Yes. But the key thing is, and I'll be very honest with you, when we have these conversations with any firm of any authority or even global governments, all investment towards any kind of goodwill goes first towards infrastructure, then towards energy, then towards health, and then sustainability is fourth on that list. <laughs> you know. Okay. Sadly, even Uflex or a U company 10 times the size of Uflex cannot change that scenario, dynamic. right? Okay. That dynamic. And okay. we are doing our best to argue that point, right? Um, but even a city like New York City, which is my home, right? Needs about a $200 million investment to recycle every bit of waste inside it. But New York City would rather spend that money elsewhere. Right? That's the scenario we're dealing with. But Uflex is ready. We're taking the lead, you know? No, I think you yeah. should start from India. Uh, we are. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Narish. Lovely.